Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. This is gonna be my first Jessica Jones video. So what I'm gonna do is just a breakdown of her character and her history in the comics. They just announced that they're taking the AKA out of the title. So if you never called it AKA Jessica Jones, you were doing the right thing. That was just a working title. It was meant to be a play on the fictional company that she started in the comics, alias Private Investigations. The character was created by Bendis to be like, like a stand-in for Jessica Drew. He was gonna use Spider-Woman in this alias comic that he was writing, but it, it didn't work out in the planning stages, so he had to create an original character. He needed someone who was kind of a, a washed up superhero to be a private investigator investigating superheroes. In the context of the Netflix series, that's essentially what the character is gonna be doing, but she, she has this whole big history. She's been part of the Avengers, she has superpowers. So what we see on the TV show will be like a small slice of her life, like when she's at her lowest. The essence of her character is that she's just constantly felt demoralized her whole life, co constantly felt like an outsider, so she just has no sense of self-worth. You can kind of see what the arc of the series is right now. In the same vein as Daredevil did during season one of his show, she's gonna go, you know, enough is enough, she'll have like a big call to action. We can thank David Tennant for that. He's playing a really nasty Marvel villain called the Purple Man. But rewind in time, so Jessica Jones is a character that, you know, because Bendis created her relatively recently, you know, in the last like 15 years, he had to retcon her into the Marvel Universe in this really big way. So historically, she's crossed paths with some of the biggest Avengers, but we've only learned about it recently, so it's, it's a bit weird in the comics. So whenever she debuted in her first title in the Alias comic, she was already working as a private investigator. Her backstory is told in flashbacks. So Bendis made it so that she originally went to the same high school as Peter Parker. They kind of knew each other, she was really shy, she had a crush on him. When she was going up to finally tell him is when he got bit by the spider. So she's like a Gwen Stacy, Mary Jane, almost ran, an almost romance of Peter Parker's. Later, her father, who worked for Stark Industries, got two free passes to Disneyland from Tony Stark himself. On the way back from that trip, they got in a car accident with a military convoy carrying radioactive chemicals. So you see, we've got like the standard Stan Lee radioactive waste origin story, you know, with her superpowers. But she went into a coma, her father died. Eventually, she was adopted by the Joneses, that's where she gets the Jones name, went back to Midtown High School and continued to be a normal teenager that just happened to have superpowers. All the normal high school stuff happened to her. Flash Thompson picked on her just like he picked on Peter Parker, who at this time had already become Spider-Man. Peter tried to get close to her, but she pushed him away. Remember, that's a common theme across her entire life. She just pushes people away. Eventually, she sees Peter fighting Sandman at their school and is inspired to use her powers to help people. That's the beginning of the Jewel Jones era. She takes that name and tries to start fighting crime. She has limited invulnerability, super strength, and she can fly, but not very well. So she does have legit powers, but she just never got like really amazing at using them. In her early years, she ends up running into Zebediah Kilgrave, a daredevil villain. That's the purple man. He uses his powers to take mental control of her and make her commit crimes for him. His power is, is that he gives off this pheromone that gives him control of people. He can control big crowds of people all at the same time. After eight months of psychological torture and control, he finally sends her on a mission to kill Daredevil. She ends up at the Avengers mansion. Scarlet Witch runs into her and breaks the psychic hold. She falls into a coma. The Avengers try to help her. Captain America ends up offering her membership in the Avengers, but she pushes him away too, just because she's been so demoralized. Remember, this has been eight months of constant torture. Her big comeback came during the Pulse storyline, where she takes the name The Nitrous and started fighting crime again. You can actually read part of that storyline on Marvel Unlimited. Not, not all of Jessica Jones' storylines are on Marvel Unlimited. It's kind of a pain in the butt. So during her time as The Nitrous, she went up against the Owl, Leland Owsley. That's this guy from the Daredevil Netflix series. We actually saw him. She ends up running into and befriending both Luke Cage and Iron Fist. They develop a friendship. Obviously, she went on to develop a romantic relationship with Luke Cage later, and they, ha they have a baby together. The cool thing about their baby is, is that she's named Danielle. She's named after Iron Fist, Danny Rand, and she became Captain America. She's like this invulnerable, super strong Captain America because she got both Luke Cage's and Jessica Jones's powers. But in present day in the series, she's still a baby. So whenever you see her as Captain America, it's always like some far future storyline. So later in her timeline, Jessica Jones ended up working at the Daily Bugle for a little while for J. Jonah Jameson, ended up quitting when he started going after the New Avengers, eventually joined the New Avengers and became Power Woman. 
it's this really vicious cycle with her, you know, whereby she'll be a superhero, something terrible will happen, she'll get demoralized and quit, and eventually some, some big call to action will happen and she'll become a superhero again. So her story is all about recognizing your own self-worth. In the context of the Netflix series, even, even if she does become fully actualized by the end, I don't know if she's going to be wearing a costume or not. She does in the comics, she has like a number of different costumes. But if you're invulnerable and super strong, there's not much reason to wear a costume. Like, Daredevil wears a costume like Batman wears a costume to scare the shit out of criminals and to protect them from, from bullets and knives. Luke Cage is a good example of someone who does not need a super suit. Super strong, super invulnerable. Like I said, they haven't announced an official premiere date, but what I think they might do is, is try and sync it up with another big Disney or Marvel movie. The problem is, is that the only other big Marvel movie this year is Ant-Man. That's only a couple weeks away, and it's possible that they're still trying to finish Jessica Jones episodes. They have to finish all 13 before they can drop them. I know a lot of you are asking about the timeline because we're getting like season two of Daredevil before we get Luke Cage, and, and it's going to get a little bit wonky. What's probably going to happen is, is that the shows will move in real time, just like the Marvel movies. Jessica Jones, whenever it starts, will pick up like eight months in the timeline after the end of Daredevil. But what's going to happen is, is we'll get Jessica Jones at the end of this year, then we'll get Daredevil Season 2 right before Captain America Civil War. Then we'll probably get Luke Cage because they're just starting pre-production on that right now. And then we'll probably get Jessica Jones Season 2. What about Iron Fist? Everyone wants to know when Iron Fist is coming. That's like the last thing they do before they do the Defenders miniseries. I would think we're going to see Iron Fist Season 1 sometime at the beginning or during 2017. Who knows? Because by that time we'll be on Daredevil Season 3. Hopefully Netflix will clarify some of this. It's just they probably don't have specific dates in mind for when they're going to drop stuff. It probably just depends on when they finish making it. A lot of you also ask, you know, how do these Netflix shows that Marvel is doing make money? And the answer is they don't make money. Netflix gets all of its money from subscribers, just like HBO. So the only real benchmarks that they have to measure whether or not a show is popular is by how many people stream it and by how much their subscriber base grows whenever they premiere the series. All things considered though, all these Marvel series, super popular. We will have multiple seasons all the way up through Avengers Infinity War, so do not worry. So what's going to happen is as we get closer to Jessica Jones, I'll start doing more videos for that series. You know, be sure to subscribe to get everything. If there's any other, you know, Netflix related videos that you guys want me to do, just let me know. The schedule is a little wonky today, so tomorrow I'll be doing a new Flash video, new Game of Thrones. Don't worry, there's been a lot of Batman vs Superman stuff too, so if I feel like that's exciting enough, I'll make a video for it too. While you guys wait for that stuff to post, you can click here to learn all about The Punisher joining Daredevil Season 2. I know everyone's really excited about that. And you can click here to learn about Mirror Master joining The Flash Season 2. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Let's high five. I'll see you guys tomorrow.